Gluten tag. In this video, I will show you how to stop making a dough like this, which is a blob of mess, and turn that into a nice looking, satisfying dough ball. <laughs> this is a great thing to master because mastering this is going to help you become a better baker. This is also handy when making pizza, for instance, or buns. So this is a great thing to master. And it's also relatively easy to do. In the end of this video, I'll show you a few things that can go wrong as well and i'll show you how to fix them so in this case this is a relatively highly hydrated sourdough around 75 percent hydration so the dough is relatively sticky just note how this dough is way less sticky than this dough this is because here we have a nice dome and when i touch the dough i have less contact with the dough as it has a nice round dome whereas here when touching this dough, it starts to stick a lot more to my hands. So that's one of the reasons why I always recommend you to make a nice, smooth, round dough ball. <laughs> okay, let me just put this one quickly to the side. I know it's stuck on the surface, so I'm just dragging it over the surface a little bit until I note that I can remove it. I'm just placing this on the side for now. You can be using a tool like this, a dough scraper, but I'll show you without, because I always like to advocate uh, to not use too many tools. Wet your hands a little bit. Cold water really does wonders. Note how the surface here is not floured. That's essential for this to, to work. We will be using the tension of the surface to make a nice round dough ball, really crucial. This works because we will drag the dough over the surface and then it starts to stick and this way it becomes nice and round. Okay, at a 45 degree angle, roughly like this, I'm pushing into the dough and I'm having my pinkies here on the surface. I push all the way until here. Oh, and you have to do it also with a little bit of a quicker movement. That's also quite important. I'm pushing here and then with the other hand I'm supporting and then I'm dragging the dough over the surface. Now it starts to stick a little bit because you have to do that a little bit faster. So same thing again, at a 45 degree angle, push and pull your dough over the surface. One more time, 45 degree angle, the second hand comes in to support and then I drag the dough over the surface. Note how this part always stays in the center. So what some people do is they roll the dough over like this. This is not what you want. You will roll up the dough like this and then you won't have that smooth surface. So drag it over the surface. Make sure this one area stays where it should be. So I'm pretty much just doing most of the force from the bottom and I'm using my thumbs here sometimes to support the dough a little bit and keep it in its position. And look at this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> satisfying blob of dough looking very good now if you do this too much you can actually overdo this then the surface of your dough is going to tear just like here for instance and then it's just going to get worse and worse now this is at the start of the whole bread process so right now this is not a big deal but in the end if you pre-shape your dough and this happens ah then you might end up having a very sticky mess at your hands so if this happens what you want to do is you just want to let your dough sit for a little bit 15 minutes and then continue and then it's going to work just like it should so don't overdo this as well one more time here on this dough because it flattened out a little bit 45 degree angle and pull and pull it over the surface what I like about using a dough scraper like this, that you don't lose parts of the dough on the surface. Let me show you the same thing with the dough scraper. I push inside 45 degree angle, I rotate, and then I pull over the surface. Now, if this is not possible at all, then it might also be that you have simply used too much water for your flour. This is a crucial thing to learn. You should not be using too much water for your flour. I would suggest you to take this dough, put it back to your container, and then add a little bit of additional flour. Sometimes some bakers like to use bread flour and you might be using all-purpose flour, and that's why your dough just doesn't support as much uh, 
water. So then add more flour, take a note, that's totally okay. Let that sit for another 15 minutes and then come back and try again. And this way my doughs are going to start the bulk fermentation process very nicely. Oh, and actually you see, just by letting this sit for a little bit, it's uh, now possible. Oh no, I should have let it sit a little bit longer. Yeah, hope uh, you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something new.